The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ali Sabri, says that a common template created in collaboration with all the creditors, including China, is essential for crisis-hit nations, including Sri Lanka. Addressing the World Economic Forum, the Foreign Minister said, steps are underway to address corruption, including the introduction of an anti-corruption bill and a central bank bill. How do you see this moving forward in terms of China's role? I think this is a very, very important because we need to understand by today, unlike 10, 15 years ago, 60% of this development finance and the debt comes from non-Paris club and non-London club members. So there is a new emerging creditors coming in. China is leading it and so is the private creditors. So we need to have a ready-made template so that you could quickly do it. Because in Sri Lanka's case, for example, we were under stress for about 10 months until the first tranche came in from last April we started the negotiation I was the finance minister then I started negotiating with the IMF we entered into the staff level agreement in September but since then it took us uh, almost eight months toward the end of March for us to get the assurances from the creditors from all over in order to get the first tranche of the payment by that time countries are under real stress and countries could fall apart so it's important that something ready-made has to be there. So it is therefore it's important that both China, the Paris Club, non-bilateral creditors like the private creditors, bondholders, all sit together and agree on a template. And number one. Number two is also it is time, for example, in Sri Lanka's case, we quickly applied and asked for a reverse graduation because we were not having access to low interest funding from these multilaterals. So we in fact spoke to the World Bank and to the ADB, reverse graduated so that we have access to funding. How are you going to address corruption? in Sri Lanka. Right now we are coming out with a new architecture in that in Hong Kong a style like the anti-corruption law which is in the parliament and we have also learned from the past though the law had been there implementation had been bad because most of the time you by law you had to appoint retired judges of Supreme Court they are 65 years old so by the time they come into the place they have lost uh, steam in their life so we are looking at all those things and learning from uh, the past and it has to be done and other most important thing is uh, we are working with the IMF and they have wanted a autonomy to the central bank, a new central bank law is coming in and then there is fiscal responsibility law which is also coming in and digitalization is one way of trying to prevent human touch as much as possible but I can say though it is our desire to eliminate corruption, you can't do it overnight, it will take time, you know that if you are coming from Sri Lanka and in our region but what we could do is to attack it and reduce it into a pragmatic level and then over a period of time with the development in other countries like this when there is more transparency more accountability more digital intervention and good laws and improvement on the judiciary hopefully we will one day eliminate it